Hello and welcome to MCA Services. This is our second video all about measuring density and in this one we're going to show you how we measure the absolute density of a sample, also sometimes called the true density. In the first video about density we discussed the difference between absolute density and bulk density and also the techniques we use here at MCA to measure each of these. Essentially the difference comes down to the sample volume that's used in the calculation of density. For absolute density, we want to measure just the volume of the solid material and exclude the volume of all open pores. Now that's shown in the diagram on the right hand side. If the sample contains any closed pores, and that's pores that don't have a route through to the outside of the sample, the volume of these pores will also be included in the measurement of absolute density. At MCA Services, we use a Micromeritics AccuPIC gas pycnometer to measure absolute density. Now, this applies Boyle's law to the measurement of the sample displacement volume, and then applies this to the calculation of sample density. And the gas we prefer to use wherever possible is helium. We'll start off by running through how the AccuPIC actually works. It has two chambers. The first is the sample chamber here, and as the name suggests, this is where the sample is housed. The second is the expansion chamber, and this is a very, very precisely known volume. It also has three valves, a fill valve, an expansion valve, and a vent valve. And these are used in sequence to control the flow of helium through the instrument. There's also a pressure gauge, and that's located here on the sample chamber. Once we've placed our sample in the AccuPIC, the first step of the analysis is to purge the sample and the instrument with the gas that we're going to be using for the analysis, in this case helium. Now this ensures that both the sample and the system are cleaned of any other gases that would otherwise interfere with the accuracy of the measurement. To purge the system, the fill and expansion valves are opened and helium is allowed to flow into both chambers to a pressure above atmospheric and typically this will be somewhere around 20 PSIG. The fill valve is then closed and the vent valve is opened. Now this allows helium to flow out of the instrument and return the whole system to atmospheric pressure. The purge cycle is then repeated a number of times to ensure that everything is flushed through, and the, the sample is cleaned thoroughly before proceeding with analysis. The number of purge cycles is selectable by the operator, but usually will apply somewhere between 5 and 10 purge cycles. The first stage of analysis is to fill just the sample chamber with helium, and this is undertaken to a pressure typically around 20 psig, again selectable by the user. The pressure is then allowed time to equilibrate or stabilise. And the conditions for determining equilibration are selectable again by the user and we will tend to use a rate of pressure change less than 0.005 psig per minute with the sample chamber isolated. This pressure is then recorded and is applied as the value p1 later on in the calculation of density. The expansion valve is then opened and helium can then flow from the sample chamber through to the expansion chamber. Again, pressure is allowed time to equilibrate at the same rate as before, and the pressure recorded at this stage is used in the calculation of P2. Our measured values of P1 and P2 are then applied to this rearrangement of the Boyle's Law equation, and in this, VE is the volume of the expansion cell within the AccuPIC, and this is precisely known for this particular model of AccuPIC. VS, the sample displacement volume, is ultimately applied to the calculation of absolute density by input of the sample mass at the start of analysis. So now we can show the operation of the AccuPIC, and we're going to analyse a piece of sample. And for this, we've chosen to analyse a single piece of autoclaved aerated concrete block. And we can analyse any solid sample, including powders, granules and so on. But we've selected this sample because it's reasonably easy to analyse. 
And we're also going to apply this exact same sample to the analysis of bulk density in the following video. So this is the AccuPIC. And the first thing we want to do is decide on which sample cell to use. There's a range of sizes from 1cc up to 10cc for this particular instrument. We need to match the sample holder to the size of the sample we actually want to analyse. And for our sample, a 3.5cc cell is absolutely ideal. The first step for any analysis is to calibrate the instrument, and that's done automatically by using a calibration sphere. Now this is particular to this cell and this cell only. You mustn't get it confused with any others. And that sits inside the sample holder and the instrument undertakes an automatic procedure to calibrate the volume. The volume of this calibration sphere is certified to the sixth decimal place in terms of cubic centimetres. The instrument has already been calibrated, save a little bit of time here, so we're ready to analyse the sample. Our sample's already been weighed, and normally we will weigh this directly into the sample cell, but to save a little bit of time, we just pop it into the sample cell, that sits inside the sample holder, and the frit sits on top. It can now be loaded into the AccuPIC. So to do that, we remove the chamber lid, the cell sits in the middle of the chamber, and the lid then screws down through a couple of roller bearings and locates securely. We're now ready to start the analysis. So, we're ready to start our analysis. The sample's already within the sample chamber here. So we tell the instrument to analyse. First thing we have to do is enter a sample ID, and for that we'll just pop in today's date and press enter. Next, we put in the sample mass, which is 1.2926 grams, and press enter. And finally, we confirm that we're using the 3.5cc sample chamber. Now what we're going to do is swap this over to time lapse. The run's going to take around about half an hour. But what you'll be able to see is, first of all, what the instrument is doing across this display here, and also exactly what's going on inside the instrument around here. Now the schematic here shows the pressure gauge, the sample chamber and the expansion chamber, and helium fill and helium vent. These three lights across here represent the three valves, the fill valve, the expansion valve, and the vent valve. The lights are off at the moment, so that means all the valves are closed. But as the valve opens, we we'll see a red light comes on. So it will proceed through five purge cycles. It will zero the pressure gauge here and then proceed through five analysis cycles. And the analysis cycles, of course, will be to first of all fill the sample chamber here and then open the expansion valve and fill the expansion chamber. And it will repeat that five times. So, ready to start the analysis. So analysis has now started. It's quickly run through the purge cycles there, and it's now onto the run cycles. It will end up taking five separate runs, and there's something called run precision here that we will discuss a little later. Uh, it could end up taking a maximum of 50 runs, but in this case, only five. The fi fifth run has finished, and the analysis is now over, and it will give us a printout of the results, which we will discuss in the next slide. So at the end of the analysis, we get a printout of the results. The header information at the top shows critical information such as the sample mass, the temperature at which the analysis has been undertaken. And underneath that, we get a summary of the results for each of the five runs, showing both the volume and the density calculated from it. A really important feature of the AccuPIC is something called the run precision setting, and that's always turned on. That means that the AccuPIC will keep repeating the analysis stage until five consecutive analyses 
give density results within a predefined tolerance. And in this case, it's been set to 0.05% of the nominal cell volume. Now, this tolerance has been met with the first five analyses, but the AccuPIC will actually continue to measure a maximum of 50 analyses if required. The final piece of information is the average density for the sample. So in this case, our aerated concrete block sample has a density of 2.4550 grams per cubic centimetre. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope this has been informative. And don't forget, there are two other videos on density analysis on our YouTube channel.